Hi, welcome to this class on differentiable manifolds. We're still in chapter four. We are towards the end of the class, of the course, and this is getting really, really interesting. Well, it's getting really interesting for me, for, for me and for some of you watching this YouTube um, channel. I also hope for my master's students. We are close to the end. Don't worry, we will soon be done. Before anything else, I'm here in the library. I didn't show you this part of my house. I thought it was good uh, to show it to you. You see how many books I have behind me. So let me take for you some of the books that I think are convenient for this part of the course. Of course, you the students have these wonderful notes that you can follow and that's what you need to follow, let's say, for the class. And also we have also complemented with the different uh, elements that I'm adding in Athenea. You have the notes, you have the, the notes from my iPad, you have the slides, maybe you have too much material. Well, I hope and um, it's never enough. That's what happens. So the other day I was recommending this book for you. This is a book uh, in synthetic geometry from a point of view of a physics and well, indeed it goes deep in synthetic geometry. So everything I'm explaining here, it's in the book indeed. Maybe with the exception of Poisson brackets, which are indeed explained more into the, in the context of synthetic geometry, though there are some examples that are really Poisson. I really, really recommend this book if you want motivating examples from physics. I think that's a great, great book. Okay, let me take one of the books that I have behind me. Let me take one behind me. Ha! That's another book. That's another book that I recommend. This is a book for, uh, in Poisson geometry. So, of course, this is not for you, my students, in the master course. This is for you if you are watching these videos and you want to go, go deeper in the subject of Poisson geometry. Well, that's a book that contains everything you want. That's a book that contains everything you want. Maybe it's like not easy to see where to start, right? Uh, reading the book, but I, I really recommend this book. Maybe in complementary with some of the books that I'm going to pick from behind. One second. Whoops! Here is that other book. You see it oh, the other way around. That's a book uh, on Poisson structures and normal forms. If you are wanting to start into Poisson geometry, that's how I started. That's my. That's a book I recommend. Uh, it's a book on by Jean-Paul Dufour and Su. Uh, you may think, oh, they are your friends, you're recommending their book. Yeah, it's true, but okay, I'm also writing a book. I'm not recommending the book because the book is not ready in Poisson geometry and in singular simplific structures, but I'm recommending this book because I really think that's the book uh, that got me started in Poisson geometry. So I really recommend this book. And then complementing with this other book that has everything you want to know and you have several complementary aspects. And you can find them in the library when these are open again. Okay, so now let's go back in business. Uh, the other day I explained uh, somehow what moment maps were. I was talking about co-adjoint actions. I was talking having something that was generating a vector field, a fundamental vector field associated to a group action. And I was like giving the whole definition, but maybe that was not enough. So the purpose of this video uh, it was not selling those books, although it may seem that I want to sell books. That's not the purpose. The purpose is to explain all the details that I didn't explain about moment maps and uh, what else, what I want to explain about co-adjoint actions, give some examples of moment maps that are not as obvious after the rotations on the sphere. And then, yeah, I promise that I will explain you how to prove are not liable theorem using group actions and I'm going to give a hint and this is connected to one video that I did before and makes me very happy the video here that I did about an example of group actions I talk about the joint flow yeah it's there 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 click there and you'll see the video so we are going to apply this is the moment in which everything in the course in which everything makes sense we are going to apply that video okay together with our definition of Hamiltonian group actions to check the action angle coordinates. And I can, because now I'm going, after that, you know, I'm going to disconnect the video. Maybe I can, you know, in, in two minutes, if I can do a proof of, act, of the action angle coordinates with my hands, 
it's going to be the following. Once you know you have this Liouville tori, which you know from this uh, topological proof that I mentioned the, uh, in the last video, I said the other day, but it was like, for me, it was like half an hour ago. So uh, you have this, this foliation by, by tori, okay? Now, what you know is that in any point of this torus, you have the root theorem, which is telling you that you have only one local mod. Well, do the grade would be to move, right? These actual angle coordinates that you have in a point and in a neighborhood. So a point on the torus laying on the torus, but the neighborhood is, uh, is two n dimensional. The point is on, on the torus, but the neighborhood is two n dimensional. Now you want indeed to move this neighborhood along this torus. How can you do this? Well, if you think about the action of the torus on itself by translations, my computer is falling. If you think about, you don't want to see how I film these videos, it's terrible, it's ridiculous. So uh, if you have uh, what I was saying, <laughs> I got distracted, that if you have like an action of the torus by itself by translations, okay, then this action is transiting. Think about this. So any two points can be connected by the left transformations, by the left action of an element of the group of the torus onto the other element. It's very simple. It's a transitive action. What's interesting, and it's super, super interesting, is that this action is indeed Hamiltonian. You can think of this action as a Hamiltonian action when you do the cotangent lift. The cotangent lift is a problem in the list. It's the first problem on the second part of the second page, which I don't remember if it's five, six, no, it must be eight. Uh, in the list where we talk about the cotangent lift of a group action. And any group action, its cotangent lift is Hamiltonian. And the moment map is just the contraction of the Liouville one form with the fundamental vector group. So what's magic is that if you look at these translations, at this transitive action of the torus on itself, then when you go to the cotangent bundle of the torus, this action is going to be Hamiltonian. But now you want to compare this model, which is like a linear model, to the real model that you have in your neighborhood. In your, you, you have a symplectic form. You want to prove that it's the one of a cotangent model, but you don't know a priori. How are you going to do it? In a neighborhood of a point, you have the root theorem, but maybe you can try to use the action of these torus to drag these uh, double coordinates. And you can do this if the action is Hamiltonian. So how are you going to drag it? Well, here I'm explaining the simple proof. Essentially, you need to adjust the action of the torus so that you can think it's a torus by translations. And the way to do it is you use the join flow, okay? The join flow indeed of, of, the, of the, so it was the flow that defined in this video. I link it again. I don't think I can link twice the same video, but okay. So uh, if I, this action of Rn descends to an action of a torus, and you can check that it's Hamiltonian, okay? You can check that, it, that it's Hamiltonian in very different ways. You can check indeed the proof in a, an easy proof. I think it's an easy proof. The one that it's in the notes, but I wrote it also for Poisson, so more general than synthetic, so more than what you need. So that's the summary of the proof. Now I'm going to write it in my iPad, so stay tuned. I'm going to close the video, and I'm going to use the iPad. So wish me luck. First, I'm going to stop the video, sorry. Secondly, I have to share with you. And now I have to share with you what I see, but you still don't see, because I'm sorry, I'm still quite bad at this. I'm gonna share the screen. And now I'm going to write in my iPad. Now you should be seeing what I see. Right, you see my, uh, you should be seeing uh, <clears throat> that section 27, not bad, 27 uh, times I wrote on, on my iPad. So now what I want first to recall of, so what I'm, what I'm going to do here is, is, so the purpose is to make the proof of this action angle coordinates, really to give the, the not complete proof, but the, the most important part, the, the sketch of the proof, really, the, 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 the core of the proof. But I need to talk, indeed, uh, about uh, group actions. And I want to do this, uh, what I'm going to say exactly now in the last 
in the in the for, uh, forthcoming in the next sorry in the next two minutes is going to recall something that you saw in the videos by van der Ma, but i thought it would be a good idea i'm going to take the conjugation i take a lee group g is going to stand for a lee group okay now i take the conjugation take the conjugation the lee group on itself That's the conjugation. So A is an element of the group, G is an element of the group, and that's the conjugation by G, which I could call CG if you want. Okay. Uh, well, I could call this CG, maybe not. One second, because I, I am moving G. Now I want to fix, I call this alpha. Now I want to fix alpha G. I take the same notation that we have been using. Alpha G is the, the mapping that takes this to the conjugation by G of H. So G, A, G minus one, okay? And if I take the derivative at the identity of this mapping, so the derivative of alpha G at the identity, okay? So for the point at the identity, this is what I call the adjoint mapping. So this has to be, of course, the adjoint mapping. If it's a derivative, it's going to be from the tangent. So that's the adjoint mapping that you saw. Okay. And it goes from the tangent of space to E. Because if you conjugate at the neutral element, you go to E. So this goes to the tangent of space to E at the group. And this is just the Lie algebra. All right. And that's a linear map. So by varying G, you obtain what is called the adjoint representation. So that's a summary of a joint quadrant game, which I think you need. By varying G on G, we obtain the adjoint representation. And that's going to be given, notation is still a capital letter. It, it's a representation, why it's called representation? Because it's a, it, you represent this group into a group of matrices, which is on the linear group of, uh, of G, all right? You can think of this as a vector space now, okay? And you got this uh, mapping here, and that's what you call the adjoint uh, representation. And now consider just the paging that the natural paging that you have from G star to G, okay, get, given just by the natural paging that you may add G star on G. So you define what is called the co-adjoint representation. by duality because the coadjoint let's say the, the adjoint representation is something that concerns the Lie algebra g and the coadjoint concerns the dual of the Lie algebra and why do we need that because the moment map goes to the dual of the Lie algebra so we need the coadjoint representation clearly so you define by duality just in the following way you make sense of this in these terms You define the you define the coadjoint representation you see on the dual of the Lie algebra. So this C for any C on the dual of the Lie algebra. Okay. And you apply this for any X, for any C and X. And you define this guy here. Sorry, you define the guy here using the definition of a joint representation. So that's the coadjoint representation. And uh you have that the coadjoint representation okay you think of this as a representation 
from the group, okay, to the GL of G star, okay? So I think that this is this mapping. That's, that's the way, and, and you have to put a minus sign so it makes sense, okay? So now uh, that, that was uh, a quick reminder of the co-adjoint representation that you already saw in chapter two. And now I want to get back to the definition of moment. That we saw in the last video here, link it here, okay? I want this video to be really short. So remember that assume that we have, uh, so I'm going to change color. Maybe changing color is not so good. I mean, I had, I had, I had some, some professional advice from somebody saying, I can't change color. Well, whatever. So let's assume that you have a group acting. Let's assume that alpha G on M acts, okay? You have an action such that acts symplectically. This means, this is something we already saw, but I'm going to remind it here and I'm going to change color. My friend is going to get mad at me and he's gonna, maybe he sees this part, maybe he doesn't, so maybe I'm safe. And the definition is that when you have the action alpha and you take alpha G, and you pull back the symplectic form, you get the symplectic form. So alpha G, which is the associated diffeomorphism, this is symplectic, of course, asymplectically. So I am assuming that the pullback of omega is omega. In other words, that the Lie algebra, if I look at the fundamental vector field, the Lie algebra of omega is zero, which is say that the fundamental vector fields are symplectic vector fields. This is totally Okay, so let's assume that you have this. Now we go back to our color. Let's see if I... So we say the definition is that this acts symplectically if, well, let's assume, assume we say that the action is Hamiltonian. if there exists a map that goes from the manifold, attention because this is going to strike you. I gave already the definition in the former video, but I think it's good to, re, to, to get this definition twice on the same day to understand because this is not clear. So this goes to the dual, to the dual of the Lie algebra of G and you define it by duality, okay? Satisfying the following two conditions. The first one is that for any an any element of the of the of the Lie algebra, remember that I use duality now, we consider the mapping mu x from M to R, just as the mapping that assigns to mu P X, okay? And I assume that this is the component of mu along X. If I take a torus, I may order this, okay? So it's the first, second, third component, okay? And now let's take, uh, now take, consider the node, X is an element of the Lie algebra, and now the node by X, uh, the fundamental vector field,
generated by x. What does it mean? It means that I take x is, is leaves on the Lie algebra. And this, I want to define a vector field on the manifold. Okay? So what I do is to take the path of the exponential, okay? And I make it apply it on a point P. That's the action. That's the action. Because when you apply the exponential, you are on the group. Okay, I said that this part connects everything. And now you do the differential of this. This is the fundamental vector field at the point. And if I can do a picture of this, I will do this in blue. What I have is the following, that you have this, uh, when you apply this point here, what you are doing is you are generating a curve on your manifold, okay? By moving T. By moving T, you have this curve. And what you are doing is to take along the, the curve, you take the vectors tangent. Maybe I should have done in a different color. And these vectors is the fundamental, this defines the fundamental vector. Is that clear? If that's not clear, you can send me an email and ask, or you know, send a comment here, or well, it's better that you send me an email, maybe it's quick. Then what you impose, okay, what you want indeed, say with words, is that this fundamental vector field is the Hamiltonian vector field with Hamiltonian fraction, this function. So write it down. You have minus the differential of mu. Let me go back to this color. Minus the differential of mu super x equals the contraction of this with a fundamental vector field omega. Okay? So this is like saying mu x is the Hamiltonian function Okay, of, and now something strange, of uh, x tilde. Okay, of x sharp. Sorry, I'm saying x tilde is x sharp. Is that clear? That's the first condition. And the second condition is requiring that mu is equivalent. And now I have to understand this equivalent condition. Well, I have to tell you a secret that in the in the torus case, that is the only case that I need for the proof, uh, this condition, or in the Abidan case, this condition amounts to nothing because the quadrant action is trivial. So it amounts to saying that the moment map is invariant, which you have like uh, for free, okay? So in the toric case, it's, it's, all, it's all, almost automatic, okay? But otherwise, the condition you have is that means equivalent with respect of the action alpha and the quadjoint action. Okay, so what you have is that mu of gx is here. Now, okay, when you do this, you're applying alpha. And now you are on g star. So this is the same as the quadjoint action of g Okay, on mu x. See what I mean. That's equivalence. Okay. Now, examples. That's what you need. Examples should be in a different color, right? I am asking my this person who told me all the colors. Maybe he's not he's not watching the video. Maybe yes, he's watching the video. He sent me a was. Let's see. Examples. Okay, I'm going to start. Well, with, uh, with I'm going to start leaving an exercise hmm? that it's an interesting exercise and that you are going to enjoy, I think. That when you have a compact group, then if you take a closed subgroup, then you can consider very easily okay that if the action the action if uh, there is a moment map the action
of G is Hamiltonian, so is the action of H. Now it's interesting to see what is the Hamiltonian. I leave this to the next. And I'm going to put examples that connect to toric to the storic examples. So I'm going to take the torus. I think that's a good example. I think of the torus as elements of the circle on the circle. So I can think of the circle as the unit complex number. So I, I look at the circles now in the complex way because it's convenient. And I, I consider uh, the action acting on CN by multiplication. I consider this action and I consider multiplication with different uh, exponents that are integers, okay? Now with k1, kn are integers. Okay, so, and I assume them, they are fixed. So you can check that this is Hamiltonian with moment map. Mu. on the dual of the Lie algebra given by mu the Z1 Zn one half K1 Z1 square Kn Zn square. That's like a first example, okay? And a second example, an example three that I'm going to leave also as an exercise. And I think that's interesting because this is the really motivates the, the word momentum. We call this moment map or momentum uh, because of this example. I consider the SO3 action on R3, on R3 by rotations in all possible directions. So not only if you think of one of the sphere, that's not good. I mean, you need to move the sphere all around, no? not along the axis. So it's like, it's the, the action on, on Earth, the all possible direction. This is on the list of problems of actions, right? Okay, so by rotations. So if I have an action on T3, so I can lift this action to the cotangent bundle of R3. That's the edge of size. And then you can check that this lift action has the same expression. You can either check that the action has this expression or check from zero Assume that you have the following action. Now I'm going to uh, A, X, Y. This is the notation of cotangent bundle. So X is on the base, okay? And Y is on the fiber. And A is, uh, uh, well, I can identify, you have this problem that uh, Robert did, that you can identify SO3, each R3, with exterior uh, product, and that's the representation. I am using this identification with this SO3 and the Lie algebra, okay, uh, and the Lie algebra of R3. So I consider uh, the, I, I just can consider, so I, I may consider indeed SO3, like as an Lie algebra R3. This is a problem that Robert solved uh, last week in this video that I'm gonna leave there, okay. So with this notation of exterior product, or wedge, we are going to call this exterior product, that's the action. So you can just start from this action, okay? And then uh, compute, compute the Hamiltonian, compute the moment map. So check that this is Hamiltonian. And that's interesting because then it's not a toric action, I compute the moment map. And I can tell you what is the solution. Then what you get as moment map is the angular momentum map. You get the angular moment map. And it's as simple as this, because the moment map has to go, okay, from R6, okay, to the dual of SO3. But this is just uh, isomorphic to the Lie algebra on R3. Indeed, the duality is quite good here. So you may prove 
that that's the moment map. Okay? That's the moment map you consider. Okay? And indeed, a way to look at this is that when you apply the moment map xy in the direction of x of a, indeed what you are doing is a determinant of x, y, and a. This is not an easy exercise, but I think it's like it's historically important exercise, so I leave it to you. Then there is a whole theory about existence of moment maps or non-existence. There is a beautiful theorem of a TI element Steinberg showing that this fact I explained about the Sun theorem holds whenever you have a torus action, which is maybe not half the dimension of the manifold, but sm smaller, you have, maybe you don't have a disapolito, but you have convexity. And this theorem is a famous theorem, which was proved by Atiyah, uh, you know, that he died recently, and in the Pendleton element stem. So that's like the two main pillars of, of, this, uh, of this theorem, okay? So, well, I think, I think, well, I have other examples here, but I think that's enough in terms of examples. I leave it to you. And then just by, to finish this, like let me connect Hamiltonian actions to uh, integral systems, finally, with the proof. So finally, so what I'm going to explain now, you, you see it like completely different. Uh, one thing I wanted to say that in the Tory case, you just need that second condition, you can drop it because you have invariance. That's the only condition you, you need for the moment map. And now what I want to go back is now a completely different topic in pink is I go back to the proof. Now that I have with all my material in my hands to the proof of Arnold, which is Liouville, Wiener, Arnold theorem. So I'm assuming that we already know, so the situation is the following. We have like a setup, remember? We have a manifold dimension 2n, symplectic. We have a I hope that you can see me because this made something strange. I'll check it out. You have a set of uh, functions. Let me erase this. So you have F1, Fn that you usually gather with a function and you usually call this one a map when you do interval systems. So these functions satisfy that they Poisson commute this means that omega xf i xfj equals zero. Okay. For in particular, observe that when I take the fibers that are regular, I get as a bonus that these are Lagrangian so manifolds. It's a consequence of this. It's a bonus that I get for free, okay? So, well, we are in the moment, well, uh, remember the condition that I said, that we say generically independent, I said it is this condition. So I am assuming that this is true on a then set. That's the condition of generically, linearly, uh, functionally independent, generically, functionally independent. All right, that appeared already in the, firm, the former slide. So that this is true on a dense set. All right. Now, step one that we already proved is that I have a foliation by torus. And so in a neighborhood of a torus, I can think that I have a torus times a disk. Now, step two, go back to this. Step two is to prove that there exists a Hamiltonian torus action. And step three, the step two is the step that I'm going to clarify. 
And a step three that finishes the proof is use this action to glide along the torus and let's say drag, I'm using one of those strange words here, glide and drag. So I want to drag, indeed I want to take with me, I want to drag the Darbu form, the Darbu symplectic form, because of course, if the action is Hamiltonian, it will preserve the Darbu form. So if it's Darbu, when I move it, it will be Darbu. That's the great, great thing about this proof, the Darbu symplectic form. So once you have two, three goals for free, from this you automatically have that omega has some global expression, semi-global if you let me, of this sort. The important thing is to prove that there exists a Hamiltonian action. So proof of a step two. Now I see my friend like crying like, oh, she changed four times the corner. Okay, so proof of a step two is the proof that there exists a Hamiltonian total action. And the magic is consider the joint flow that is on this video, link there. Consider, consider the joint flow. I made a video about this group action because I knew I was going to need it. I consider, this is something that I already checked. The, the torus is compact, okay? Uh, so the fiber is compact, therefore it's a torus, therefore you have the vibration. So if I take the flow, it's a fine for all T. So I, I can extend all the flow for all T. And in, in the neighborhood of the torus, I consider the joint flow T1, Tn. And I plug this guy to the composition, and I do this in the following. Now I take in time T1 of the Hamiltonian vector field of F1. And I compose, you say, why you can apply the exercise? In the joint flow, I needed that the vector fields were commuting. I remember this this thing that I saw before. And now the magic does everything for me because I have proof, that's great, that this is the Hamiltonian vector field of the bracket, therefore this is zero. Therefore I'm in conditions of applying uh, the solution of that exercise or that difficult example that I did, which was the joint flow. Look at the video. So it says that if I have n commuting vector fields, I had an action of Rn of Rn whenever things were complete. Things are complete here because it's compact. Okay, so this is Tn, X of n, that's wonderful. So we know that this is an Rn action. See video up there, it's wonderful. Now, the thing is that I want that this, because, because I have a torus, I want that this gives me the sense to Rn action by a quotient to give me a Tn action. The way to do this is by uniformization of periods, which I can do uh, formization. That's not super trivial, but I can do this applying just the looking at what, the, what does it mean to have a period of a point and then making all the periods equal to one. Okay, so I can do this just applying the increasing function theorem. It's as simple as that. So by inference of periods, I can assume this not, doesn't happen every time, it happens here, okay? Because I have this, I have the torus, I have the base, and it tells us that any point on the torus has the same, the same, uh, the same period uh, space, but then I can uniform. So at the end, if I uniform all these periods in the neighborhood of a point, applying the implicit function theorem, then this is constant equal to Zn. Therefore, I have the standard torus. Okay, that's more difficult than what it seems, but I mean, well, difficult is not the word, it's involved. But it's very, very interesting. So I have for free an induced T and action in the neighborhood of this torus. That's the key point 
of the proof of action angle coordinates. Now we just left to check that this TN action is Hamiltonian. That's an exercise, that's an easy exercise. And especially since you know that omega in the neighborhood of a Lagrangian leaf can be written as the differential of alpha, which is used for the definition of action functions. So, and why is this true? Because the class of omega in a, is zero in a neighborhood of Lagrangian leaf, in a way. Then, uh, this is a consequence of Einstein's theorem. Einstein, I could say Einstein, Arnold, whoever theorem. And that's a, a very interesting thing to see how you can make the proof of Concare Lemma work in this setup. So any symplectic form is exactly in the neighborhood of a Lagrangian manifold. And that's a key point to make that this action, uh, that this torus action is Hamilton. Okay, so this ends uh, this video, okay? This is the main point ingredient of the proof of the action angle coordinate. I'm very satisfied uh, because this ends the chapter on symplectic geometry. Now, after this, I'm going to leave as an exercise to look in your, uh, in your working time a video, as I said, on introduction to Poisson geometry that I did in 2014 when I was uh, in the Poisson conference 2014. Uh, 2014, long time ago, or 2016. I don't remember. Okay, I think it's 2014. We'll see. Uh, this was in Urbana Champaign. So, uh, and I link the next video here, up here, so you can follow. Okay. I, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe there will be more videos with examples or exercises if you ask me to do this. Maybe this is the last video of the course. Okay. Uh, send me emails if you want more videos, etc. Okay. Okay. That was all, guys. See you soon.